Things going on, and uh, I, I retired from the military in 2010. Okay, and I went to uh, TSA, then I went to DOL, then I wound up here. So I've been around probably double You're all over the place. Yeah, thing. <laughs> I'm not trying to stay in one place, I'm used to moving. You know, I, I stayed in the army 23 years, and all those 23 years I moved at least 10 times. Oh, really? <laughs> all within the states or within the states? Oh, everywhere? Everywhere. So it was like. You can move all around. Oh, she never told me that. Yeah. Well, how do you do that? Yeah. Well, you have to fly with your arm. You from Philly? No, I'm from Baltimore. What happened when the Baltimore folks departed? Uh, I picked the Philadelphia Eagles. I can understand. I've never left them since that time. I don't like the Ravens. Yeah. So I stayed with the Philadelphia Eagles. That's good. Decent season last year. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They made it to the playoffs, yes, which I was not expecting. I thought it would take them at least a couple of years. Huh? So I thought it would take them at least a couple of years to get through where they got last year. They did pretty good. Changed quarterbacks and a lot of different things, huh? In, the, the, okay, so. Yes. You know, this is going to be video tape, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. we're, we're aware. Okay, fine. good. Well, I was just trying to, trying to work out with Charlie the, the computer system. The, the NSA ones we do, mm -hmm. they basically, they have us get to disk and they load it onto yeah. you know, an actual computer. So right. So the NSA controllers, ah, no problem. You know, they can stand there and say, no, 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 this is just the monitor. Yeah, that's all the way. Just the monitor. So we were trying to figure out how to go back and forth because um, this, the PowerPoint is fine, mm -hmm. but in between, Things up because yes. there's in the 40s and things like that, and most people when they look at forms like I don't know what they're just now. Yeah, so I'll try to kind of point it out on the big screen. You know, this okay, is what he's cool. talking about here. Okay, that's cool. So it's it kind of jumps around a little that's bit. That's okay. And when it, it, it's still just trying to draw a line, but my phone is after that. You got to kind of know what this is talking about to be able to find something mm -hmm. there. So, but this should he, he set something up that he should be. We should be good. You know, last year we had the planning seminars, uh, the financial planning. Mm -hmm. We were lucky if we had maybe 60 people. That's it? 60 people. How many people do you have in the. Uh, 6,000. You know. Okay. You have, you have 10 regions, you have this building, and you have the building across the street, what they call 7100, mm -hmm. which is just near Rolling Road. And we have another building. That we have. I want to say, uh, what it is. Okay. So, it's all the way live. Yeah. And uh, that's a lot. And I'm used to it. One minute? Okay.
bird was to be fine. They just like coming. But you pick up something each time. Yes. And that's, that's what's different. Yes. And then that's what I'm, I'm ready in here. Yes. Yes. So I'm ready to go. My hat. Is it my turn? Good afternoon, everyone. How are we doing today? Good day? Can everybody in the regions hear me? I hear silence. Yeah. Yeah, they're muted. So they hear me, but they're muted. Okay. My name is Anthony Baker. I'm the division director for pay and benefits. And I'd like to um, uh, welcome everyone to the first of our series of workshops and seminars on, um, on your federal benefits. Today's um, seminar is on financial planning. And I think you will find it informative and educational. So without for any further ado, I'd like to introduce your mistress of ceremony, Ms. Andrea Curtis. They say keep it short, keep it brief, and move on. Thank you, Tony. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And um, as Tony already welcomed you, we'd like to welcome you to our 2014, our first seminar for this year on financial planning. Before we get started, I wanted to go over some administrative items for you all to keep in mind. For those that are audio conferencing, your uh, phone is actually muted at this time um, to be respectful to the presenter. However, at the end of uh, the presenter's presentation, we will open the lines as well as the floor to any questions. At that time, those uh, that are audio conferencing will have to push pound and then five to then ask your question. Um, and as I said, we would like to, we ask that you please hold your questions on, until the end of the presentation. We do have a sign-in sheet to capture um, all of you attendees. For those that had not signed in um, outside of the auditorium, we will be passing the sign-in sheet around. So we ask that before you leave or upon you leaving that you please sign in if you had not done so. Regional office, office employees who are attending VTC in person, we ask that you sign in at your location. And for those that are attending via, via audio dial-in, we ask that you send your attendance to your regional office liaison or to email our help desk at hrcenterhelpdesk at cms.hhs.gov. In your folder, in the packets that you, did re that you have received, there is a survey. And we uh, strongly encourage you to complete your survey and provide it to our benefits team um, that will be located outside of the auditorium. If you would like a copy of the presentation, uh, especially for those that are audio dial-in, we ask that you also email the HR help desk to request a copy. Again, their email address is hrcenterhelpdesk at cms.hhs.gov. And I thank you all in advance for your assistance regarding these administrative items. Now I would like to introduce our guest speaker. We have here David Walter, Jr., um, along with uh, Ryan Mazzarino. And I hope I got that right. <laughs> Mr. David Walter, a senior vice president and financial planner with RBC Wealth Management, has taught courses in pre and post retirement planning for 34 years. He has taught courses at Towson University, Howard Community College, UMBC, Montgomery College, and Anne Arundel Community College. He currently provides lectures on retirement planning 
for NSA, CIA, CMS, Social Security Administration, and Verizon Corporation. He has 34 years experience in financial planning and investment management. His clientele is from walks of life, both corporate and federal employees. He is well versed in CSRS, FERS, and TSP information. David is a dynamic, knowledgeable, and experienced speaker to all audiences, which have ranged from small as 10 to as large as 800 attendees. He makes the difficult task of planning for your retirement and post-retirement an entertaining experience by engaging the audience with humor, direct, honest, no-nonsense, common sense advice. We welcome David Walter. Thank you. Thank you. Can everybody hear me in the back? Hopefully you clap at the end as well as you did in the beginning. Thank you for the opportunity, Tony and Diane. Thank you very much. Thank you for the privilege of being here before you today. You need to know a little bit about me. I may leave some of you black and blue today. I may bruise you. I may touch some nerves. Uh, sorry, but I'm going to do it. Better that you hear it now than when, when it's too late. Background on me, if you'd like to know. I grew up in Burtonsville, Maryland. Anybody know where Burtonsville is? For mom and dad, bought back in 1961, moved in 2001. And I'll refer a little bit to my parents, and you'll see why. I'm married. Patty, my wife, is an oncology nurse. Everybody knows what oncology is. So we have an interesting conversation at the dinner table at our house because Patty's all about let's enjoy life to an extent and sees the other side. And I am come from a whole different approach about putting away enough money to do what someday? Retire. I have three boys. If you'd like to know, I didn't have the recipe for girls. My oldest, David, is 31. I have my first grandchild. Grayson, who just turned one year old, whole different world. Brian is 28. He works at no such agency. <laughs> so he's in our backyard. David's up in Tom's River, Jersey. And then I have Michael, who's a buyer for CarMax. So I have gotten a real skinny on cars. Real skinny, okay? Now, we're empty nesters. Everybody's gone. Everybody's out on their own. Woohoo! All right. I've been doing this. As the intro said, for 34 years, I've been a big believer of putting away money. So you know I started when I was 12. I don't know where the bug bit me. Somewhere along the lines, the bug bit me about putting away money and trying to earn more for my money. I'm a little older than some of you would guess. The baby face is wonderful. The gray hair, my wife said, adds, adds dignity and character. So I'm a little bit older than some of you may guess. You also need to know about my philosophies. First is, keep it simple, sweetheart. Keep it simple, sweetheart. The fancier you get in investing, the more money you're going to lose. Best example of what just occurred recently. Anybody hear about the Bitcoin mess? Yes or no? I couldn't even tell you what they are. The closest I can get as far as a definition is probably Dave and Buster little coins. Okay? That's as probably as close as I could get, and I've never been to Dave and Buster's. Okay? So be careful. Use common sense. Pay yourself first, put away money. It is absolutely amazing in my career how many folks will not pay themselves first. And I'm sure some of you have seen the bumper sticker that says on the rear of the car, the one with the most toys wins. Anybody ever seen that bumper sticker? Yes or no? Yes? We were out one day with Patty and myself driving and I saw the bumper sticker and I said to Patty, bumper sticker is all wrong. What do you mean the bumper sticker's wrong? I said it should say the one with the most money wins. Now, Patty's my junior high sweetheart. She's my sounding board. Right away she says to me that's crass and materialistic. I said that is not what I'm intending by that statement. What it means in English, honey, is the day I retire, if I want to work again, it's because I what? I want to choose to. Everybody agree? Yeah. It's not going to be a what? Have to. 
I live near Clarksville, Maryland, if you all know where that is. We're legal. We have a giant food, a McDonald's, and we had a Blockbusters up there, so we're legal. Invariably, when the boys were younger, if I took them up to Mickey D's, there would invariably be a senior citizen doing what? Waiting on us or out in the area, as you know, mopping the floor or wiping tables. My contention is that individual, that senior citizen is not there because they want to be. I'll give you this much that they want to be. Overwhelmingly, I would bet you dollars to donuts that they're there because they what? Have to be. So my greatest wish for all of you in this room, the day Elvis has left the building, hasta la vista, you're not a coming back to work that you never look back and you have your financial house in order, your ducks in a row. And I'll warn you, we're living longer. I've had three clients hit age 100. We're living longer. So the money has to last a very long time. You also need to know that I'm a big believer in having no debt. I think the day you leave here, you should be debt free. I haven't had a mortgage since 1999. I will get arguments today if we get there about a mortgage being a write-off. I am telling you now, it is the best feeling in the world to not have a mortgage. Not one of you in this room can argue with me about the merits of having a mortgage because emotionally here, it gives me great freedom. I get to walk around my house like this. <laughs> and they can't take my house from me unless I do what? I don't pay my real estate taxes. I can work at McDonald's after I retire and make enough to pay my real estate taxes. So I'm begging you, and I'll caveat it now so you know, if you're staying in the house you're in now, that's the last house, and you ain't a-moving, pay it off as fast as you can. Especially in line with the day you plan to walk out of these doors. I have yet to have anybody come in my office in 34 years and say to me from the other side of the conference room table, how much of a mortgage can we carry into retirement? Can you help us? I don't have those people come in. So I'll warn you, having no debt makes life 10 times more palatable. Will we pay taxes? Absolutely. This is the greatest country in the world. I don't care what anybody says. I don't know why you'd leave here. So we will pay taxes. Can you avoid state and local taxes? Yes, you can. There are about seven states. You know some of the names. Okay, Florida, Tennessee, Nevada. Okay, so I can, Washington State. So I can give you states where to go to pay no state and local. You're not going to escape federal taxes. So it is what it is. You make your monies, you pays you what? You pays your taxes. Okay? As we go along, if you have questions, jot them down. We'll come back and answer them. If they're pertaining to you in particular, do me a favor when you ask me. Start with my friend, okay, my friend, all right, my friend would be very, very good, okay? Now, purpose today, so you know, at many of the places that they mentioned where I lecture, the seminar is anywhere from three to six hours, so you're getting a smidge or a tip of the iceberg today, and retirement planning is incredibly important, and I'm going to spend as much time as I can giving you snippets. If you like it, you have to tell them on those sheets and we'll come back and do more. Because I can talk for hours about this topic. And does it need it? Absolutely. So I truly care that you're getting the information and you're hearing it today. What's sad is there are folks out there, I know it's none of you, you're here, who should be in here to hear this. Okay? Now, let me illustrate. For illustrated purposes only, did everybody hear what I said? For illustrative purposes, I, re I just retired a month ago. I did not, literally, for illustrative purposes only. I am looking very forward to my first retirement paycheck from OPM. I know about direct deposit. Don't beat me up. I know about direct deposit. I'm going down to my mailbox this Friday in anticipation of my first retirement check. Lo and behold, I get down to the mailbox. It's there. Woohoo! Meanwhile, I've been sleeping in. Playing golf? No, I haven't. I've been shoveling snow. <laughs> okay? Point is, I've been able to do whatever I gosh darn want to do. As I'm walking back up the driveway, I pull out the retirement paycheck, and I look at it, and I go, oh, my gosh, I stopped dead in my tracks. You want to know why? There's a big mistake with this check. So I get in the house, 
and I'm rushing right for the phone and Patty says, what's wrong? I tell her there's a huge mistake with my retirement check. She says, what's wrong? I said, it's nowhere near what it used to be. So I call Tony or Diane. I get them on the phone and I say, folks, there's a problem with my retirement check. What's wrong, Dave? Tony, Diane, it's nowhere near what it used to be. Dave, did you attend our pre-retirement seminar? Uh, no, I'm a dedicated federal employee, Tony. I never left my desk <laughs> or my cubicle. Now, you know that isn't true. So then Tony says to me, Dave, what would you do with the handbook we gave you the day we hired you? I'm too embarrassed to tell Tony that I've lost it via moves or it's buried in a box, cardboard box somewhere, or it's on a bookshelf gathering dust. Well, Tony says to me, had you bothered to do any of those items you would know what your retirement check is going to be. So, I know about your retirement system. You can't BS me. How many of you in this room are CSRSers? Show of hands. You should raise them as high as you can. Why? <laughs> Congratulations. You have the second best pension plan in the world. The only one better is Congress's. <laughs> Self-serving, it should be. Okay? No, it shouldn't but it happens to be, if you're a SERS, and we will tell you from my side of the desk if you come in my office to see me, we'll tell you as planners that you'll need anywhere from 65 to 80% of your last year's income the day you retire. And then the arguments come, I'm not going to spend money on lunches, I'm not going to spend money on clothes, I'm not going to spend money on gasoline. T. Rowe Price did the study, the first decade of your retirement, we spend 100% of what we were. It's called K-I-D-S or G-R-A-N-D, K-I-D-S. <laughs> or it's C-A-R or it's H-A-W-A-I-I or it's C-R-U-I-S-E-S, -E <laughs> we will find a way to spend it. The second decade, should we live that long, we'll spend 70% of what we were. We're starting to slow down just a little bit. Third decade, should we live that long, we'll spend on average 60%. This is statistically from T. Rowe Price's study. By the way, the second and third decades, the majority of that money is going to, any guess? Healthcare, my wife's in the business, she's waiting for us. <laughs> okay? So, as a CSRS, -er, congratulations, you can roll out of here with 56 and a quarter of your high three with 30 years service and age 55. Yes or no? Yeah. For each year I stay thereafter, I pick up an additional 2% per year. I can get 41 years, 11 months, and walk out of here with 80 plus percent of my high three. Can I go higher than 80? Yes, I can with sick leave. What a great country. Yes or no? So when I tell folks all you're going to need is somewhere between 65 and 80, can you get to the 80? Yes, you can. You just have to work what? Oh, Dave, that's a, that's, uh, that's a nasty word in my vocabulary. But you can't tell me you can't get there. Now, if you're first, congratulations, you have a pension plan. It's just not as good as SIRS, but at least you have one. Where I work, we have no pension plan whatsoever. At RBC, there is no retirement plan. I have a 401k plan that is like your TSP, no match. Whatever I put in is my problem. Patty at Howard County General Hospital, albeit it is owned by John Hopkins, no retirement plan, no pension. Have a 403b like your TSP, no match. So. When I get up in the morning and Patty gets up in the morning and we look in the mirror, who's responsible for retirement? We are. No excuses. Can't do what my kids' generation is doing, which is what? It's not my fault. It's somebody else's. Okay? So as FERS, you need to know this. 0.01 times your high three times your years of service if you leave here under age 62. It's real easy. 0.01 times your high three times your years of service. That's your gross pension. Now, if you stay past 62, it gets a smidge better. 0.011 times your high three, times your years of service. On average, FERS pensions are somewhere between 30 to 40% of your last year's earnings. Everybody hear what I said? So if I roll out of here having earned 100 at the end, my pension is going to be somewhere between 30 to 40. 
Conversely, the SERS could be anywhere from 56, 250 to what? 80 grand. And do you remember when they tried to get us to all change? Hey, we got this new plan called the FERS. And you're going to let you put money in the TSP and we're going to give you a 5% match. Those were the days when the stock market was cranking returns like you can't believe. You cannot believe how many federal employees I had call me who said, <laughs> I'm not staying in SERS. I'm going over this FERS because I get a 5% match in my TSP. And that thing is cranking 20% per year. Did it end? Yes or no? O O to O2, it ended violently, if you remember the tech wreck. Have we had some wrecks since then? Yes or no? O eight O nine, when we all thought the world was coming to an end, we all rented the G fund? Yes? Some two have never returned back to the market, and accounts have doubled since that time? Yes? No? I know it's none of you in here. It's them out there. Okay? So at least you have a pension plan. plan. Congratulations. As I said, Patty and I have none. So you have a huge leg up on us. Huge leg. Now, you can't give any excuses. In retirement, your four sources of income are, and you can follow along in the handouts, i.e. pension. As we said, congratulations, you have it. Woohoo! And you know your number when you leave here now. No excuses. I just gave you the formula. Okay? Your second source, potentially, this typically will apply to FERS, or if I have a spouse who isn't here, or is a first spouse, or works in the corporate world, we may be eligible for what? Social Security. Average check today, $1,269, 15228 a year. If I stripped away from all of you your pensions and said your sole source of income is only going to be Social Security, how many of you could survive on 15228 Any show of hands? None. For the record, none typically go up. And yet... What was originally designed to be a supplement for many folks today, yes or no, I'm sure you all know the stories, is the main source of income for many retirees today. Pretty gosh darn sad. My parents, I said I'm going to reference them a little bit. Mom's a retired school teacher from Prince George's County. She has a pension. Woohoo! With a cola, hot diggity dog. 88 and 86. They're in an assisted living facility now. Everybody ready? Dad, no pension. Zero, nada. Nothing. Little IRA account. Social Security, mom has Social Security. What are we talking? 3800 bucks walks in the door. It took the sale of an asset to propel my parents toward a nice retirement. What asset was that that they sold? House. Their house. So that's number three, savings. It's wherever you can stockpile money. And for years, prior to the 06 real estate market meltdown, I had audiences tell me, Time after time after time, they didn't have to worry about saving for retirement because their house was going to be a huge rate of return for them. My parents had a 15-bagger. Do you all know what I mean by that term? Yes or no? My parents paid $20,000 for their house in 1961, sold it for $305,000 in 2001. That's a 20-bagger. What I mean is 20 t 15, excuse me, 15 times 20 is 300 grand. How many of you in this room think you're going to get a 15 times rate of return on 15 bagger on your home? Yes or no? Nobody? So I used to be told, I have one, I used to be told in seminars that, it, as I said, it was going to bail me out. Now it's not the case. And I also had folks tell me in seminars, real estate is the best investment. It never goes where? It never goes down. Has that theory now been disproven? Yes or no? Absolutely. So there's no investment, I don't care which one you holler out to me, that doesn't have a cycle where it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down, or it doesn't go sideways in value. So back to your sources of income, you're going to have a pension, potentially Social Security, if you're FERS, or you have a spouse who's eligible. Okay. I'm going to have savings. Oh my gosh. Here you need to stockpile as much as you can. And we're going to talk about the best way to do that. Last but not least, sometimes I have to be Vanna White in my office and I have to play Wheel of Fortune because I'll tell folks if your pension doesn't cut it, your Social Security doesn't cut it, and your savings isn't enough, then it's blank ORK or blank OB. What am I speaking of? And I'm not going to make you buy a vowel. What letters go there? W or a J. 
and you can't believe it. I've literally had people in my office tell me they're never going to retire, they're going to work until they die. That is not my plan for retirement. Hopefully it's not yours. So I cannot tell you enough. Pay yourself first, pay yourself first, pay yourself first. Put money away. You will never cuss me for how much money's in your account. Two words typically get said in my office constantly. I wish. I wish, gang, I had a bell for every time I heard those two words. They come in two forms. I wish I had started earlier, or I wish I had saved more. All the time. I wish I had a bell for every time I've heard that in my office. So I can't implore you enough without even getting on my knees to put away money. As I said, we're living longer. Life expectancy on average is 85 according to unisex tables. I use in my projections age 95. My parents are 88 and 86. They beat the odds. Some of you may be sitting here with parents in that same circumstance. Yes, no? Okay, so I'm not barking at the moon. I'm making sense. Yes or no? Okay. All right. After the 08 09 debacle, when the media did a great job of telling us the world was coming to an end, I said to Ryan, who was introduced with me here today, and I have a third partner, Lauren Danielson, in our DC office. Lauren is a gentleman. I said to them that as a result of the 08 09 debacle, every client, every investor, every potential investor, every potential retiree, every retiree should be asking themselves two questions. First being, where's our money? Most folks, when they come in, have no clue where their money is. Dave, I'm in this mutual fund. I own a CD. I think it's a Tower Federal Credit Union. I think it's a SA, BFCU. What's the rate? I don't know. I haven't looked at the statement for years. I don't know where all our money is. You should know where your money is. That's number one. Number two, you should be asking yourselves, before you, Elvis has left the building, hasta la vista, do we or do I have enough money to last me the rest of my life? I just had Patty and Bud in yesterday. Patty is rolling over her TSP to an IRA with us. Thank you very much. That's great and nice of her to do that. Okay? But... Patty's first question in the office was, what can you get me on my money? And I teased Patty in the office and I said to her, if I give you the biggest number in terms of rate of return, do I get the account? And she's looking at me and I said, Patty, it's not about getting the highest rate of return. If I tell you I can get you 10%, 12%, you're going to kiss me. What you should be asking me, Patty, is, is our money... Or my TSP going to help me the rest of my life? Is it going to sustain us? You cannot believe how many folks have no clue if their money's going to last. And you know what one of her comments was to me yesterday? My, her parents only lived until they were 69, both mom and dad. So she wants to consume her TSP, she's 62, in the next seven years. She wants to eat it, just spend it. And I said to her, Patty, there's only one problem. Should I call you at age 70 and say, my gosh, you've made it. And since you've made it and you didn't think you were, do we now need to come over and shoot you? <laughs> I'm a straight shooter. No messing around. I'm going to hit a nerve. You want me to hit a ner another nerve? You all ready? We're going to talk about the TSP. I'm going to tell all of you in this room right now. You have the best deal since sliced bread. Thrift Savings Plan. I have a 401k, which is the counterpart, as we said. Patty has a 403b, which is for nonprofit. You may be married to a spouse who's eligible for the 457, which is for nonprofit, i.e., municipal employees, county, city, state employees. You can't beat those plans with a 10 foot pole. Everybody hear what I said? You can't beat those plans while you're working with a 10 foot pole. If you're not in the TSP to the greatest extent you can afford it, Everybody forgive me, I'm going to say something. I'm going to hit a nerve. You all ready? You're dead from the neck up. Did you all hear what I said? You are dead from the neck up. The coffee pot just brewed. Did the alarm clock just go off? 
Did the flowers finally bloom? Would you rather have 800, 600, 400 in your TSP when you roll out of here? Or you like 60, 50, and 80? I know my vote. And as I said, you'll never cuss me for how much is in that account when you leave. Everybody hear what I said? You need to get in the TSP tomorrow. You can do it online, no excuses. And get in. If you're under 50, 17.5 is your max. I still have folks come in and see me from the federal workforce who tell me I can only do 12%. I can only do 14%, 15%. Those days have long been gone. It's a dollar amount, 17.5. If you're over the age of 50 or 50, and by the way, it's not the day, and I've had that in my office. Dave, I won't be 50 until October of 2014. Really? It is the year in which you turn 50. You need to grab TSP Form 1 and do the catch-up of 5,500 additional dollars. You will kiss me at tax time, which some of you are in the throes of now. And if you're not, you will be, because it's a direct reduction on your W-2. What a great country. You can reduce your taxable income, pay less taxes, have money go in a plan with your name on it. When you leave, you can take it with you and have it provide an income for the rest of your life. Does it get any better than that? Yes or no? So I'm telling you right now, if you're not in, you are dead from the neck up. No excuses. Get in that plan. And I tell folks who come in and see me, if you're not in, don't give me a nickel to invest. You need to get in your plan at work. If you're FERS, you have a match. Happy birthday, Merry Christmas, July 4th, Easter, whatever your favorite holiday is, you get a match. What a bonus. And I still have federal employees come in who aren't putting anything in. It's like, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Outrageous. So do me a favor. <coughs> Put in the TSP your 401ks, 403bs, 457s, as much as you can. Am I making sense, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Many times in our office, folks come in as a result of seminars like yours and they want to know, hey, where's our money? So we do an inventory. Where should it be? We'll tell you. And we answer that question. Is your money going to last you the rest of your life? Well, hot diggity dog. Okay? That's all great and good. Sometimes after we run those numbers and tell you, is it green or is it all red? And it's better than burying your head in the sand like an ostrich and going, I don't want to know. Really? You're going to figure it out after you retire. Okay? So many times after running these numbers, I have to play Monty Hall. I'm going to age myself now. Do you all remember the show, Let's Make a Deal? It's on again now, somebody told me, with a different person, obviously. And Monty Hall had doors to choose from, if you remember. Do you all recall that? And let's make a deal. So I tell folks in my office, sometimes I'm Monty Hall. And I will tell you, after running your numbers and your projection, that I have some doors you get to choose from. By the way, my doors are not very popular. You're not going to like my doors. Door number one, I may tell you, you need to save more money. <gasps> Dave, it takes all we make or all I make now to survive. We can't save anymore. And you'd be amazed how often I hear that in my office. And all I do is the lunch test, so I'll do it on you. Is there a cafeteria here, yes or no? What's lunch run, three bucks? Six to nine dollars? Are you serious? In the cafeteria here, nine dollars. Holy macaroni. Are you serious? Nine bucks. Wow. So you're telling me I'm going to spend $45 a week for lunch times 52? Wow, I'm spending over $2,250 for lunch because I'm a dedicated federal employee. I don't even take two weeks vacation. Now, I know it's none of you in here. It's them out there who will tell me they can't save any money and I just found $2,250 plus dollars. It's called lunch. Mama didn't make me born yesterday. I know what lunch runs. I just wait for one of you guys to give me the highest number. And is there flex time here, yes or no? Yes. Oh, so we can get in here at six? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, and then maybe we can go to the cafeteria and eat what? Breakfast, because Tony's not here yet and he doesn't know. <laughs> right? So I'm going to give you a deadwood day and management's attempt at downsizing. 
and I know some of you come to work here for this announcement, there's going to be an early out. We're downsizing and we're going to give you $25,000 to leave early. By the way, it's about 16 net after tax. So it's not a windfall. Most people who grasp for that money have one intention with that money. It's called pay off credit card debt. That's what they're trying to do. Really? And then you're gone? It must come with a magnet. But management's attempt is to always get rid of dead wood. Dead wood will never leave. <laughs> it's been my experience. Dead wood is very adept at hiding. We come in at 6. <sighs> Nobody's around. I got the Washington Post, the Baltimore Sun. I'm going to go to breakfast with, your name is? Pedro. Pedro. I'm going to go to breakfast with Pedro. Why? Because nobody's around. We're going to shoot the breeze for about an hour. I'm going to go back to my office. I'm going to shuffle some papers because around about 10 o'clock it's time for my, my smoke break. Now, I don't know about you folks. I don't smoke. Where's my 10? Where's my 15? Okay? Next thing you know, it's lunchtime. So I call Pedro and I say, hey, Pedro, let's go to what? Lunch. Spend about an hour shooting the breeze at lunch. Come back to my office. I shuffle a little less paper because before you know it's time for my afternoon what? Smoke break. By the time you get there, it's 2.30. I'll see you tomorrow, Pedro. It's been one heck of a day. I get home, Patty says, how was your day? And I go, oh, babe, what a tough day in the office. <laughs> That's a Deadwood day. They'll never leave. They won't take the early out. They have no hobbies. They have no life. They're here. You know them. Okay? So, do me a favor. Save more money, it's doable. I can look at all your budgets if you have one and I can find places to pick and pan and find places where you can save money. That's your deal, not mine. I don't live at your house. Door number two, Ryan and I talk about all the time, work longer. As I said to you earlier, we get a lot of the Italian sign in my office. Dave, that's what we think about working longer. What, are you kidding me? I've had it up to here with this place. I can't stand work. I want to retire. Please make sure the numbers enable me to retire. Unfortunately, many times the circumstances are work longer. I had Tina in Montgomery College. Peter, her husband, works for Department of Agriculture in Beltsville, Maryland. Okay, 66 years of age, ran the numbers. Okay, couldn't retire until they were 72. He wanted to retire, and so did she at 68 they were going to have to save $208,000 the next two years to retire at 68. Couldn't do it. It was more than they made combined. So he didn't like the news of having to stay until they were 72. By the way, Tina said we're going to move to Percival, Virginia, wherever that is, some small town, and have a mortgage for $200,000. So I said to her, Tina, really? We're going to carry a mortgage at 68 years of age if you could retire? Yes. Gosh, help us, you're going to pay a mortgage for 15 years to 83, or gosh, help us until you're 98. Really? Really? Well, it's a tax write-off. It's not a tax write-off. It's 10 times better to be debt-free. So we may end up telling you after running these numbers, you need to do what? Work longer. At least you'll know before you do what? Before you retire. Door number three, my favorite door. Don't retire, die at your desk. <laughs> has it happened here, yes or no? Yes. Has the ambulance pulled up out front? Oh, I know it has. Absolutely. Now, I've added a fourth. I've added a fourth door. Prayer. And that comes in the form of C-O-N-S-U-L-T-A-N-T -T, or, which has happened to some of the government agencies and you can't blow smoke, C-O-N-T-R-A-C-T-O-R, -T -T -O right? Where I tell Tony, gosh forbid, there's an early out, and he says, Dave, you're my most treasured employee, you're not leaving. I say, Tony, I'm out of here. I got my financial house in order. All I was waiting for was Uncle Sam to give me 16 net after tax as a bonus. I don't need it to pay off credit cards, I'm leaving. Tony says, not you, Dave. Yes, I'm gone, see ya. Meanwhile, he's trying to get rid of Jimmy, because Jimmy's what? Dead wood. Jimmy's not leaving. So what happens down the road? Tony calls me at home one day and says, Dave, how's it going? It's going great, Tony. Now, I can't see Tony, but he's in his office like this. He's on his knees. He's got the blinds closed. 
because he doesn't want any of you to know that he's on the phone begging me to do what? Come back. Because see, I'm the brains. I had a lot of this. And the problem is, Jimmy and Mary replaced me, who are 24 and 25 if you're lucky. And they went to William and Mary and Duke, and they're more than happy to tell you how much they know. Yes or no? Now, I know it's none of you in here, it's them out there. So now Tony's on the phone with me in my office, and he says, Dave, 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 can you come back? And, I, and he says, first, Dave, how's it going? It's been going great, Tony. I'm playing golf, shoveling snow, doing whatever I want to do. He says, Dave, can you come back and be a C-O-N-T-R-A-C-T-O-R? He doesn't know it, but I've been waiting for this phone call. <laughs> so I don't know it. He's willing to pay me whatever I want to come back. Why? He needs me. I'm the brains. I've taken my knowledge with me. And so I tell him on the phone, how $75 an hour sound? He goes, can you start tomorrow? And I happen to tell Tony on the phone, I don't even need benefits. <laughs> I've already got him. I'm retired. <laughs> and by the way, Tony, you need to know a condition of my employment. What? I'm working Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. You can have me 10 hours a day, Tony, Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays. No Mondays, no Fridays. It's my life and Patty's. And we're going to enjoy it. So you can pray for that if save more, work longer, or don't retire and die at your desk doesn't pan out. Or if your pension, your Social Security, and your savings don't add up, then you better believe in prayer and hope that your manager, like a Tony, calls you one day and says, hey, I've been thinking about you. Can you come back and help us out? Has it happened? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. But could that game end at any point? Yes, it could due to efforts to save money, okay? So, I want you to grab a tax bracket chart. It should be in your handouts. It should look like this guy, okay? Tax bracket chart. It should be, I think, on your right-hand side. It has 2014 tax rates on it. Everybody see it? And some of you are in the throes of filing your 13, I know. And I wanted to spell a myth or a big misnomer. There's a book out there in the library, or you've heard it, bandied about at a cocktail party or picnic, and the comment is, the day you retire, you want to be in the lowest tax bracket possible. Have you ever heard that, yes or no? Yes. All right, I want you to know right now, wrong, wrong, wrong. If you check out that book from the library that tells you that, throw it away, don't take it back. I'll pay for your book. If you hear it at a cocktail party or a picnic, don't even listen, and I'm going to illustrate it right now. You know I'm married. I had three kids at one point, so let's pick on the second half of the page at the bottom. That's for married. At the top is single filers. I'm married filing jointly. If I told you mama didn't raise us to be dumb, Patty and I are moving to Florida because there's no state and local tax, and by the way, we're down here and we've arrived, we're in the lowest tax bracket possible. I've achieved the ultimate goal in life. Hint, hint, tell me what our is income is in Florida. How much is our income in our retirement years? It is the top line of the bottom half. How much is our income? Say it louder, no trick question. 18150 is it not? So our income is somewhere from zero to $18,150 a year, and Patty and I have arrived, we're in the 10% federal tax bracket. We're going to pay $1,815 in federal taxes. We're going to net $16,335 net for the year. Hot diggity dog. Do you think we're going anywhere? We going out to dinner? We doing any sort of entertainment? Gosh, help us if the car what? Dies or breaks down. Are we in trouble? But there you are. That's the lowest tax bracket. I don't know about you all. I would rather say to you that Patty and I are down here in Florida so we can avoid state and local taxes. But guess what? We're in the highest tax bracket possible. That means our income is at least how much? Hint, hint, last line on the page. It's over $457,600. Now, I don't know about you folks. I am not a happy camper because my federal taxes are almost $128,000. Do you all see that? So our net after tax is about $330,000. Now, I'll continually do this survey wherever I lecture. 
If you're retired today and you have the choice of 330000 net after tax or 16335 which one would you choose? Three hundred or the sixteen? You know what a lot of folks would choose? And I know it's none of you in here. It's them out there. Because they're told being the lowest tax bracket the day you retire. Now, by no stretch of the imagination am I telling you all today that you cannot leave here until you're in the highest tax bracket and your income is 457.6. What I am telling you is the following. If you retire and your income is 18,150 to 738, is that better than 0 to 18,150? Yes or no? Is 738 to 148,850 better than the previous two brackets? Yes or no? Do you all get my drift? The day you retire, you want to be in the highest tax bracket achievable. You can control state and local taxes, as we said, by moving to certain states or states that are pension friendly for your federal pensions. You can look them on Kiplinger's. There's a list. You're never going to escape federal taxes unless you leave this country. So you know what? You're going to pay them. So get rid of the myth about you want to retire in the lowest tax bracket possible. Baloney. Everybody agree? Have I dispelled that myth or notion? Yes or no? Okay. And then it's amazing as well while I'm on it. Some of you may be in the throes of it. You're filing your tax return and you're very excited to get it done because you're getting a refund from the state of Maryland or from the Fed. That is called, if you're getting a refund, there's a term for that. It's called intoxication. And it means, by definition, nice feeling you get when you receive a tax refund from the state or Fed until you realize it was your own money in the first place. That's called intoxication. So the name of the game, gang, is not to get a refund. The name of the game is to claim enough exemptions or withholdings to zero out or laugh as you write a check for hopefully a small amount to the state of Maryland or the federal government. That means you had use of their money all year. And yet I hear continually in my office all the time, it's the Christmas account. It's a vacation account. Really? Do me a favor. Put the envelopes on the back of the door get a zero refund, and every two weeks out of your paycheck, put money in the envelope for the Christmas club or the vacation account. Really? If you're going to loan money interest-free, can I have it? I promise to give it back to you next year. You don't even have to file a tax return. I'll write you a check. I brought my checkbook with me today. And I'm not going to pay you any interest. Is that a deal? And I told Patty when I came here today, I'd bring a yellow legal pad and I'd see how many suckers, I mean nice people I could find who would sign up for my deal. Any takers? Yes or no? Oh, shoot. So you mean I have to go home tonight and tell Patty I didn't have anybody sign up to give me money interest-free? You all get my drift? The name of the game is not to get a refund. It is not about that. Okay? And then as far as mortgages... Remember I mentioned the day you leave, pay it off, especially if you're staying in the house. I'm jumping around just a tiny bit. There's something known as a truth and lending disclosure. Whether Ryan puts it up or not, doesn't matter. It has four boxes at the top. And on that truth and lending disclosure statement, it usually has what your interest rate is on the loan. There it is. Your finance charge, how much you're going to pay the bank, 290 grand in that example. Okay, you're borrowing 248. And then always that last box on the far right that says total cost of the loan. That's the laughing statement on the way home in the car. You want to know why? Because Patty elbows me and says, oh my gosh, can you believe this? This house is going to cost us $539,697.12. And I say to Patty, who's the last laugh on? Is it not on us? Yes or no? Really? I want to borrow $248 and give somebody back $290? Really? That's a deal? And you know what? I get arguments all the time that it's a tax write-off. And I'm going to illustrate it very graphically now. I'm very nice. I'm going to make all of you who have a mortgage today in this room, I'm going to make your mortgage $1. See how nice I am? All I want you to do every month is I want you to put a dollar in an envelope and it says Dave's Mortgage Company. 
Pedro, would you tell everybody where that check's going? The mortgage company. And where's the address? The Pink Beaches, Hamilton, Bermuda. All right, Pedro said, Dave. It says Dave's Mortgage Company, the Pink Beaches, in Hamilton, Bermuda. See, I'm going to be sitting on the beach, and I'm going to tell Patty, the first of the month, the fifth of the month, the tenth of the month, fifteenth of the month, thirtieth of the month, I have to go to the post office box. Why? Because I'm going to collect Pedro's dollar. And then what I'm going to do, Pedro, since I'm very nice, okay, I just want a dollar from you, what I will do, Pedro, is I will give you back 37 cents, 28 cents federal, and 9 cents state and local. 28 and 9 is 37 cents. So all I want Pedro to do is give me what? A dollar, as the rest of you. And I'll give all of you back 37 cents. Is that a deal, yes or no? It's not a deal? Yes or no, is that a deal? So wait a minute now. You give me a dollar, and I'll give you back 37 cents. So 63 cents is what I get to keep, yes or no? Yes? yes? Everybody agree? A dollar minus 37 is 63? Everybody ready? Wrong. I know a dollar minus 37 cents is 63 cents. I wasn't born yesterday. But as your mortgage company, I don't give any of you in this room any money back, do I? Does anybody get any change back from their mortgage company? You don't get it back until February to April when you file your tax return. So pardon the pun, I have Pedro's $1, 100%. I've got it. I'm the mortgage company. I have the dollar. I don't give him 37 cents. Uncle Sam and Mr. O'Malley give him that when he files his tax return. So I'm laughing all the way to the bank. So gosh forbid bankers or mortgage folks have the audacity to ask us, do you know any other suckers, I mean nice people who could use a mortgage? Yes or no? So I have a hard time getting it through this thick noggin here. I don't know why you wouldn't earn the dollar at work, pay the 37 cents in taxes that you owe, and the 63 cents left has your name on it. Yes or no? Am I barking at the moon? Yes or no? So I sit here and I don't see where a mortgage is a write-off. I don't get it. And I don't know why you want to go into debt and retirement. And yet just recently, bankrate.com, which some of you may go to to see the highest interest rates on CDs, just had an article, February 3rd of 14, that said, another study by the Center for Retirement Research at Boston College found that retirees today, folks in their 60s, have increased their debt two-thirds from what it used to be. Two-thirds. The biggest culprit. Mortgages account for the largest portion of that debt. Older Americans are not only more likely to have mortgages than in previous years, they're also taking longer to pay them off. February 3rd of 14. Do me a favor. Pay your mortgage down. Get rid of the debt. Am I making sense? Yes or no? All right, questions you might have? Yes, no? Any so far? I'm doing good? Yes. Yeah, um, so recently we came out with the, the CFP law. Okay. Yeah. Question was, and I'll repeat it. Your name is? Carrie. Carrie. Carrie says, Dave, we recently had an introduction of the Roth TSP versus the traditional. All right, Carrie, you want my two cents worth? Yeah. Okay. First of all, Carrie, we said you can't beat the TSP with a 10 foot pole, correct? Right. All right, Carrie. My contention is as follows. The Roth is the greatest deal since sliced bread when it was first issued, Carrie, in the form of an IRA back in 1997. So the first guy on the block, Carrie, was the Roth IRA back in 1997. And I said to my wife, what a great deal when it was introduced because whatever it earned down the road when I go to take it out, it would be tax-free. What a deal. This is back in 97. Okay? The problem was, Carrie, can you see this fine print? Uncle Sam giveth and Uncle Sam taketh. When they issued the Roth 
IRA initially, Carrie, they said if you make more than X, you can't contribute to it. And the numbers today are if you're single for 2014, okay, if you make more than 114 grand to 129. If, Carrie, you make more than 129, no can do Roth IRA. Stay with me. I'm going to come around the barn. If you make less than 114, Carrie, you can do a Roth IRA. If you're married for 2014, okay, it's 191 and 181 grand married. If you make less than 181, you can do a Roth. If you make more than 191 combined, no can do Roth. Now, Carrie, you ready? I know your heart's going to bleed for me and Patty. We've never been eligible for the Roth. So I know you're going to get a little violin and go like this for us, right? So we've never been eligible for this. It's the greatest deal, except Uncle Sam put a little waiver on it and said, your income's going to determine your eligibility. Now, I think it's the greatest deal, but my biggest fear, Carrie, is they're going to tax that in the future. I think. I think, Carrie, they're going to change the rules. I'm off the record now. This is not RBC. This is Dave Walter. And if, if you say to me, Dave... That's breaking a federal promise. That's breaking a government promise. If you say to me, Dave, that's double taxation. They told us it was going to be tax-free, and now they're going to tax it. All you have to do, Carrie, is go into my handout, and there's a 1040 in there. And on line 20A, it says Social Security Benefits. And it asks current retirees or folks who are drawing Social Security, Carrie, on line 20A to tell them how much Social Security mailed them. And on line 20B, it's not on the tax bracket chart, Carrie, it's on the 1040 in your handout. On line 20B, Carrie, it says, so let's pretend it's 20 grand on line 20A, Carrie. On line 20B, I may have to put 10 grand down or 15,000 down, really 17 grand, excuse me, as taxable. And what's that called, Carrie? Double taxation. Because the Grey Panthers eons ago, raised holy heck when Uncle Sam said we're changing the rules. And I think, Carrie, you'll see in my 1040, that rule changed in 1983. Does it say that to the left of it? That they changed that rule in 83. So if you tell me that would be double taxation, Carrie, I'm going to tell you they're already doing it. So Carrie, last year I took David and Shannon, my son and his wife, and said, let's pretend they do a Roth IRA every year. They're 30. And for 30 years, they just earned 6% and they put 5500 in a Roth. At the end of 30 years, Carrie, they have $920,806 in that Roth for both of them. Now, Carrie, 330000 of it's their own money. 5500 times 30 years. That's one hundred sixty-five dollars they each put in. So, Carrie, they have $590,806 tax-free in their Roth IRAs. Woohoo! Now, Carrie, I'm coming to the Roth TSP. I tell David and Shannon, you need to put 17.5 in every year for the next 30 years. If it earns 6%, they have $2,929,836. I used 6% rate of return. A million fifty is their own money. 30 years times 17.5 is 525 they put in. They will walk away with a million eight seventy nine eight thirty six tax free. Now let's go back and add the Roth IRA carry in, 500 and change. David and Shannon are walking away with at age 60, $2,470,642 tax free. 30 years from now. Now I don't know about you, Carrie. There are these two social programs called Medicare, you're here, and Social Security that are running just a little bit short of money. So I'm betting, Carrie, that the rules change. And it could be we're going to extend Social Security age from 67 to 70 or 72. It could be we're going to raise the wage earnings under which you are subject to Social Security, 117.1. Up, oh, it's going to be uncapped like Medicare. It could be we're going to means test it. It could be Medicare is already doing it to an extent. Are they not means testing? Yes, the wealthier pay more. So I think the rules will change. They could also carry go. You know that line 20A and 20B for Social Security? Bag 50% taxable or 85% taxable. Tell us what Social Security mailed you and put it down as taxable again. So there's all sorts of ways to sustain the system. All sorts of ways. 
So, Carrie, my fear is that Uncle Sam's going to change the rules. So my advice to folks who ask about the Roth TSP in my office, Carrie, is the following. Maybe you do 8,750 carry to the Roth TSP, and you put the other foot, 8,750 in the traditional. At the end of time, Carrie, we're going to do this. Oh, wow. Wish I'd put it all here. Hmm. Really would have been smarter if I'd put it over here. Because we don't know. The tax laws and tax rules change all the time. Now, Carrie, I'm a little selfish. This is me off the record, as I said. I like paying less taxes today. So I love pre-tax. So I like the traditional TSP better because I'm reducing my income and paying less taxes today. And I have Patty doing the pre-tax traditional 403B at her work, Carrie, because I want to bring her income where? I want to bring it down. And then, Carrie, there's always somebody in the back who yells, but what are taxes going to be when you retire? And I yell back, I don't know. They've only changed 34 times since 1913. When President Kennedy was in office, the highest tax rate was 70%. Will they change over time? Absolutely. I can't worry about, Carrie, what happens down the road. I can only about worry about what? Here and today. So, Carrie... My advice is do the traditional because it lowers your income. You can't beat it. But you can do the both roads and both camps. Then I get asked here, where should I put my money in the TSP? You all interested for my two cents? Yay, nay? You still doing okay on time? I could go for hours. <laughs> Tony said if I wanted, I could keep you all to six. I'm kidding. All right. I get asked all the time. How do we invest our TSP? From our side of the desk, and I'm not the only one, Fidelity, T. Rowe Price, Vanguard, Wharton School of Business, where I spent some time, okay, will tell you the following. With your investing, you should use the age rule. And the age rule says the following. You take 100 minus your age. And your age is supposed to be indicative of what you keep on the safer side of the fence, which have historically been the F or G. Did everybody hear what I said? This is supposed to be the safer money. F or G. The difference can go to the growth, and I'm going to use the television show, forgive me, C-S-I, because it's easy to remember. Now, I'm going to tell you what the real world is. Last year, the C fund did 32%. The S fund did 38%. The I fund did 22%. The F fund was minus 1.68. And the G fund was a whopping 1.89. So if you followed the age rule, you suddenly learn to stutter. Because the phone call to me is, but, 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 but Dave, the CS and I kicked butt last year. And I'm sitting in the F and I lost 1.68, or I'm sitting in the G and I earned 1.89. And the problem is you're listening to everybody in the office. And they don't live at your house. And they don't live in your shoes. And that money in the G fund can never go down. It can only go where? Up in value. Yeah, it's not the greatest rate of return, 1.89, but you can't lose it. And if you're close to walking out the door, you're really willing to do this, Yes or no? Is that what it's about? Then that five-letter word enters the picture after a year like last year called greed. G-R-E-E-D. And I'll give you an illustration. I had Jim call me second week in January. And his comment to me on the phone was, I only made 15% last year in my account. Really? Can I tell you all a secret? I keep extensive notes. You know what he wanted per year? 6% per year. If he could get 6% per year, he'd be a happy camper. And I said to him, what are you talking about? He said, I was at a party. This buddy of mine got 30%. Really? Mm -hmm. I said, can I tell you a secret? Mm -hmm. My deferred comp plan last year did 29.8, so I'm your buddy. I'm like your buddy. My 401k did 36.2% last year. So you know what? I'm your buddy, and I beat your buddy. You ready? I'm all in. 
I'm 100% in the market. So Ukraine blows up, where's my account going? North Korea fires a nuclear missile, where's my account going? Okay, Iran, Iraq do something stupid, where's my account going? Down, correct? So I've told folks, you should reverse it and think about how much do you not want to lose? And whatever that amount is, belongs in the G fund. Sorry, yeah, but the return's lousy. I know you're going to stutter. But, 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 but Dave, last year 22, 32, and 38 in the CSNI. Yeah, I know. But you didn't want to take the risk. You told me that was money you didn't want to lose. Yeah, I know, but everybody else in the office is beating me up. Why are you listening to everybody else in the office? I know you all sit next to financial gurus. I know that. But you need to ask them this question. Why are you still here? If they have the answers, tell them I'm hiring. Dave Walter, 410-730-7488. I'll hire them and we'll mint money. I will first have to go to Home Depot and buy locks. Home Depot or Lowe's and buy locks because we're going to lock the door. We're not even going to take phone calls because we're in the office minting money. So do me a favor. Ask your fellow workers who are more than happy to tell you what to do with your TSP money and where to put it. Why are they still here? if they have all the answers. And I know there's always one in the office who does this. In case you all are interested, I'm moving my money. And everybody says, oh my God, Dave's moving his money. So what's everybody do in the office? <laughs> We're going to follow Dave. Can I tell you all a secret? Dave doesn't know more than anybody else. Okay? So, the age rule has been preached forever. It was very popular after 08, 09. You cannot believe how many people called me and said, I want my age to be the safe money. Then you know what happens? We have a year like last year, and you know what? Nobody cares again. Pedal to the metal, hot diggity dog, we're having a great year in the market. It's your money, I don't live at your house. But you better understand, as much as this can go up like a year like last year, it can just as quick go where? And you know what? All I have to tell all of you is go look at the January returns in your TSP. The C fund got clobbered, the S fund got clobbered, and the I fund got clobbered. And if you annualized that for the year, you were big time negative more than the positive. So you know what? It doesn't go straight up. You better think about what amount of money you don't want to lose. And whatever you don't want to lose really belongs in the G fund. Don't go to the F fund until you hear Janet Yellen say these words as head of the Federal Reserve. I'm done raising interest rates. Because the bonds they're buying in the F fund now may be paying only 3%. They're going to keep them. If two years from now rates are 6%, they're buying new bonds at 6 Do they still have the 3% in the portfolio? Yes, they do. What are they worth? 80 cents maybe on the dollar. So you're going to take the hit in your account. Hence the minus 1.68 last year. Return for the F fund. So don't sit in the F fund until Janet Yellen says, we're done raising interest rates. Just do me a favor. Put as much as you can in. If you like the age rule, stick with it. Put on blinders and earmuffs. Don't listen to anybody who sits around you. It's not their money. They don't live at your house. Now, if you have discretionary capital, carry past the TSP. The next best deal is an IRA. Whether Roth or traditional, Carrie, I used myself earlier. The Roth IRA, remember, has an earnings limitation. The traditional carry has been around forever, like 1978. Patty and I have continued to do a traditional IRA, can't deduct it, so some of you are going to yell at me. Why would you do it when you can't deduct it? Because it still grows tax deferred. Yeah, but what are you going to pay on taxes? Who cares? Patty has 375000 in hers. I have 360 some thousand. Would you all like that statement in your house with seven hundred grand on it? Yes or no? And if I told you I'll pay you 6% on that in retirement and you won't touch your principal, I'll pay you 40 plus grand a year while you're retired off that 700 plus thousand, would you take the check? I know you would. So... The second best deal after your TSP is an IRA. If you qualify for the Roth, run, don't walk. Why? Because April 15th of 2014, a month and change from now, that window closes 
because you're allowed to do a contribution for 2013 tax year. What a deal! And I've had folks come in who did not max out the TSP and say this to me. Hey, can I go back and put in money for 13? Sorry, payroll deduction only. The window closed 1231. You're now in a new time period. But I'll give you a surprise. What? You can go back and fund a traditional IRA or a Roth until April 15th of 14. So you still have an opportunity to catch up for money you should have put away. And then, by the way, if none of you in this room have a traditional IRA, if you don't have a traditional IRA, as of January 1st, 2010, you have a unique advantage. Uncle Sam changed the rules January 1st, 10. I have people who are now in their fourth year doing this. It's called you open a traditional IRA. You put the money in. It is 5500 Max, if you're under age 50, Carrie, I'm going to use you, is that all right? Carrie, if it's 50, and remember it's the year, Carrie, if you're age 50 or older, it's 6,500, they have a thousand dollar extra catch up that you can fund. Now, if you make too much to do the Roth, so, oh, I can't contribute to the Roth, we make too much. You open a traditional provided you don't have one, you let it sit for one night. And the next day, you convert it to a Roth. You have no tax liability. Why? Because the traditional sat there for a day. It didn't even earn anything. So you have no tax liability. So all you're doing is taking the 5500 or 6500 and saying, I'm going to take it out of the traditional, which is tax deferred. I'm going to bring it over here, Kerry, to this good guy that Dave talked about called a Roth. And from this day forward, whatever it earns is what? Tax free. Woo! Hot diggity dog. Uncle Sam changed these rules January 1st, 10. I still have people who haven't heard of this yet. And it's called a backdoor Roth. It's perfectly legal. You are not committing anything illegal. I have the article in the office if you want it. January 1st, 10. What a gift. So I have folks who have now put in 22 grand or $26,000 the last four years and they're on their way to when they want that money and the rule is 59 and a half or five years. They can now start taking what? Tax-free income out of that account. They can go to Hawaii. They can buy a car. They can do whatever they want with that money. Help the grandkids, help the kids, whatever. It's all tax-free. You want to talk about a major gift? There you go. Yes, ma'am. I'll repeat the question. So with the backdoor Roth, it's still okay to deduct the traditional amount off of your income taxes? Okay, your first name is? My name is Anna. Anna? Yes. Anna's question is, Dave, if I contribute to the traditional IRA, can I deduct it? No. Even if you qualify? No. If you want to deduct it, Anna, don't convert it. Leave it as a what? Traditional. Now, Anna, I would argue that... Potentially, unless they change the rules, Anna, you have the ability to do what? Convert it to the what? And potentially have that money be what? Tax-free. Okay? But you cannot deduct it. No double benefit. Any other questions? Thoughts? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not familiar with this. I'm sorry. I already have TSP. Are they the same thing? Are they similar or different? Okay, your first name is? Nadia. Nadia? Nadia says, Dave, I'm a little confused. Thank you, Nadia, for being truthful. I'm a little confused about the TSP. That is Thrift Savings Plan, workplace only, okay, deduct from paycheck. You can't win the lottery, Nadia, and bring a check in here. It's payroll deduction only. Once that window closes, we said 1231, you're done, new window, okay? The IRA, Nadia, anybody who has earned income can feed an IRA. If you have wages, salaries, or earnings, Nadia, 
you're allowed to do an IRA. Now, not yet. You may qualify to do a what? Roth, because you make under a certain amount. You may say, Dave, I don't make under a certain amount. So what am I eligible for? You're eligible for the traditional, like Anna was asking about. Either way, as long as you have wages, salaries, or earnings, you can fund an IRA. And you can't believe, Nadia, how many people tell me this. You know, I'm doing the TSP at work, so um, I don't qualify for an IRA. Who told you that? Well, you know, they. I keep trying to meet they, Nadia, wherever I go. They have just left. I hear a lot about them on the phone, Nadia. They say, I have never met them yet, Nadia, in 34 years. I can't meet them. Nadia, wages, salaries, and earnings qualify you for an IRA. How much you make determines whether it's Roth or traditional. And all I want you to do, Nadia, is have as much money as you can walking in the door. The day Nadia retires, the bigger the checks, the better. The more checks walking in the door, the better. You'll never complain to me. And I've never had anybody yet, Nadia, say this to me in my office. Damn you, I have too much money. And I'm really <laughs> pissed at you. It doesn't happen. Question was over here. Yes, no, question? Yes, sir. Yes, your first name is? Tom. Tom says, Dave, the reason to do the back door is you make too much to contribute to a Roth. Yes, I do. If I don't have a traditional, Tom, I'm going to contribute to a traditional, convert it to a Roth, now I have a Roth. Okay? Yes, that's answer that question. Yes? We're going to try and do some bone questions. Yeah, we're going to... Yeah, so... Uh, I'll, stay, we're gonna take I'll, a, stay, I'll stay as long as people have questions. We're going to take a couple questions on the phone, and then anyone um, in the auditorium that would like to ask a question, if you can line up at the mic. Um, Danielle is our phone moderator. At this time, we will accept uh, questions from um, our audio dial-in. Good afternoon. If you'd like to ask a question at this time, please hit pound five. This will allow you to unmute your lines and ask your questions. Again, that's pound five. I have a question regarding the five-year rule with the Roth. Yes, sir. Uh, it, it does. I have a, a, the question. I guess I have pertains to um, if you open it up uh, five years ago. Yes, sir. And you, and you want to take your money out, if you've deposited, say, last year or the year before, can you take that money out also? Or do you have to wait five years from the time you add to your Roth? All right. Ready? You are always allowed to go back and get your contributions penalty free. So whatever you put in, in the first place, you can always go back and get penalty free. So if I put in 5500 for the last five years or 6500 for the last five years, I can go get that money penalty-free. If I want the earnings to be tax-free, it is date of first contribution. Each succeeding contribution does not restart the clock. Your clock is based on the date you made your first contribution. Okay. So, so if I understand that, after five years, I can take all of my money out of the Roth uh, Earnings plus, is that? Yes. That's true. Okay. And you have to meet and 59 and a half. And 59 and a half, right. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, the, the TSP has a number of, um, they're called life cycle funds. The, the L funds. funds. Um, are there any pros and cons to doing that? I mean, I've heard that, you know, you're better off just, you know, investing on your own and not using the life cycles. Do you have an opinion on them at all? All right, I'm off the record. I'm not RBC, right? <laughs> no. I, look at your t I run your TSP every single month. And I tell folks, as I said earlier, fund it while you're here. You can beat it after you leave. While you're here, you can beat the life cycle funds. If you'll do a study of their rates of returns, you can beat them by going to the individual funds. For a lot of folks... The L funds are a nice default option because they want to go to dinner, they want to go on vacation, they want to enjoy life, 
They want to spend time with their kids or their spouses, and they don't want to fool with their money or much less worry about it. So for an awful lot of folks, it's a nice default option because as I age, the money moves over time closer to the G fund to be safer, assuming that I'm in an L fund that matches or is approximately my retirement year. So it can be a very conservative fund. I think you can beat it, and I can prove you can beat it by going the individual fund route. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Danielle, I'm going to take one more call Okay. on the phone. Pound five for, call, for questions. Again, that's pound five. They're spellbound. Okay. Well, I believe it's three, if I'm not mistaken. Anybody have questions? We'll, we'll take this last, this last question, and then um, we'll have to um, convene the presentation. As David said, he'll be available at the end if anyone wants to stick around and ask some questions. So this is the last question. There's, uh, yes. My name is Sharna, Sharna. and there's um, something in your brochure that says, Secret to Building Wealth. Thank you, Sharna. I forgot. If I had time, Sharna, you ready? In your handouts, as Sharna alluded to, there's a sentence I have there, the secret to building wealth. And Sharna, I should have introduced it in the beginning and told you, but the problem is, Sharna, the minute I tell you, then I would have been able to leave. And you would have not had any information. You ready, Sharna? The secret to building wealth. Spend less than what you make. Does it get any simpler? Doesn't get any simpler. That's my secret to building wealth. And thank you, Sharna, for bringing it up. As I said, if I had mentioned that in the beginning, I could have left. I'm done. <laughs> See y'all. And you wouldn't have received any other information. All right, listen, fill out your evaluations. They only know if you want more of this if you tell them. I'm more than happy to come back. I was here years and years and years ago. I think you want this information. I think you need this information. It's available if you want it, but you have to let Tony and Diane and folks know it. It should have been standing room only in here. There should have been a line out the door. If you liked it, tell others, let them know, but please give the feedback to them via the evaluation forms. Thank you for coming and staying. Thank you, Dave. You're welcome. For an excellent job. Um, what I will do for you all is that once we collect up the surveys and we look at everything, I'm not going to make you a promise, but we will try to do this again in the very near future because of the interest, okay? So thank you for coming and attending. Fill out the surveys. Please sign the sign-in sheets if you haven't signed in, and I thank you again for coming. Have a great afternoon.